by polls for four constituencies will be held on May 19th in Tamil Nadu and counting is on May 23rd. The big question is who will win in Tamil Nadu? But before that, you have to understand the celestial mathematics of Tamil politics. See, totally there are 234 seats. Two years ago, 18 ADMK MLAs were disqualified, then two more MLAs died, one of them just a few months ago owing to a heart attack. Then two more ADMK MLAs who defected were again disqualified. Now there are only 212 seats, 22 seats are vacant, so bipoles are being conducted to fill these 22 seats. For 18 seats, the bipoles were conducted on April 18th itself, and for the remaining four constituencies, that is Tirupanagundram, Aravakuruchi, Sulur and Otapidaram, May 19th is voting day. So why were those 18 MLAs disqualified? After Jailalitha died, the ADMK government was asked to prove majority in the house. This is called a flow test. By then, the ADMK party had split into three factions. The Edapadi Panisami faction, O Panir Selvam faction and the TTV Dinakaran faction. Edapadi and Panir Selvam joined together to continue the status quo government. Just before the test of confidence, 18 MLAs jumped to TTV Dinakaran's faction of the ADMK. Classic case of horse trading. And the horses, I mean the MLAs, were housed in a resort in Kutralam so that they could not be contacted by the ruling government. So they were disqualified under the anti-defection law. Can you imagine a breakfast without idli and dosa? In the absence of Jailalitha and Karunanidhi, the ADMK and the DMK have been reduced to a pungal breakfast-like scene. I mean, it does the job but dulls the senses. So this election is the last chance for both parties to assert themselves in the absence of their supreme leaders. The ADMK right now hangs by a paper-thin majority of 110 seats. The DMK has 97. For the ADMK to stay in power, it needs 8 more seats to get 118. DMK, on the other hand, has to win 21 seats out of the 22 in this by-election to bring down the government. Now, it looks like an easy victory for the ADMK. But the stars are not easy to read. Double anti-incumbency, infighting within the party, no clear leader figure, too much association with BJP in public's perception, all these factors go against the ADMK. Almost all of the exit polls, including Times Now VMR in English language media and Chanakya in the regional language, point to a DMK victory in the assembly elections. But I am not sure how DMK giving 9 seats to the Congress in Tamil Nadu is going to help either the DMK or the Congress. I guess we'll have to wait and watch. Now, so far as the bipoles are concerned, the margin of victory for the ADMK is much higher. But the outcome of the bipoles is still very up in the air, again, because of a number of factors. Now, they're dependent on the individual MLAs and the spread of their sambar in their respective constituencies. Also, according to the same opinion polls, there's very little guilty feeling among the public when it comes to taking cash for votes. Accepting cash from multiple parties and then voting for the party of their choice has become the norm in a number of areas. Kamal Hassan's Makkal Nidhi Mayyam, Seeman's Nam Tamir Kachi and TT Vidinakaran's AMMK will all eat into precious votes. But this time too, the battle is between Jailalitha's spirit and the ghost of Karunandi. <laughs>